Hey guys, welcome to the England Rugby Podcast with O2 Inside Line. I'm Dylan Hartley and this week I've got Ben Youngs and Courtney Laws. Benny Youngs, Courtney Laws, thank you for joining me. Um, loads, I don't even want to mention it. Um, we always talk about the bubble to start. How are two old horses finding it? Because you guys have known previous, you know the old school, you know the new school, and now you know the lockdown 3.0 school. Uh, how are you finding it, Lenny? What, what's what's new and what's different for you in it? It was it was already it was different, obviously, in the autumn when we got together. Uh, it was pretty strict then, but now with the new regulations, it's, it's very strict. There's a lot of downtime within our rooms, confined to how much time we can spend with each other. Every meeting's outside. It's, it's all nothing that probably lads haven't already spoke about, but um, it is, brings a different challenge. I think the blessing for us is um, a lot of guys know each other already. A lot of guys have built relationships over the few years or, or for years gone by. Um, it's probably a little bit harder for the new guys coming in because it's just not quite, you haven't able to probably get to know them as well as you'd like and spend as much and invest as much time as we'd like into those guys. It's probably a little bit challenging for them. But having said that, we do have a very welcoming group and it just shows like on the training ground, really, just how important that is, really. Once we're out there, actually stay out there for a bit longer, just have a chat with someone. It's quite nice. Well, actually enjoy training. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's game training. It, no one ever enjoys game training but uh, until it's finished. But yeah, at least, at least you have a chat after. But me and Courtney are holding up all right. It's, his birth, it's your birthday next week, Courts, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So we've got some cake to look forward to. Oh, hell. I mean, <laughs> like, are there small wins like that in camp? Like, do you boys get, still get birthday cakes and stuff? Because uh, I, don't, I don't know what era this was, but like we were talking off camera before about breakfast time and omelettes and things like tomato sauce being taken away. You know, like you need those small wins. You need the birthday cake <laughs> to get you through these weeks. Are you, you boys still getting cakes? I think we'll get a cake, yeah. I think. I don't know. What did we have? For Eddie's birthday was this campaign, wasn't it? Yeah, can't remember. Did we have cake for Eddie? Probably, did probably it, some fitness. I, think, oh, I, I remember talk remember. of cake. I didn't actually see it, but I think it came out late. Um, but there's ketchup dills. You'd be happy to know that. That's and mayo. Good. Yeah. It's so it's true though, Dills. You do need the, you need the small wins, mate, because there's so much that is like, uh, especially now that you can't do and you're not allowed to do that actually like any little victory like that. Like today we had a barbecue, didn't we, for lunch courts and it yeah. was like, so nice it was like <laughs> like sitting outside but we had a bit of sunshine like yeah. a burger this hot dog it was like wow the small <laughs> things mate yeah it I is mean, mate like all, all three of us we, we've been through two or three managers each um yeah. martin johnson yeah. Stuart lancaster i had rob andrew right at the start on a on a uh, that was a whirlwind tour that one and now eddie my experience under eddie is like he throws all that in and it's just like boys you, you're all you're all big boys, you're, you're grown-ups, make the right choices type thing. Courts, what little luxuries have, um, have you kind of got? Have your kids or your wives sent you into camp with anything to, to kind of keep your spirits up? <laughs> no. no it's a, mate, my, I kind of want to know is, what Jess has sent in. My in, miss is in. not worried about me, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> and she knows she should be, to be fair. Uh, no, mate, I ain't got much going on. I bought a little, um, a little electric hob thing. And uh, on my on my frying pan, in so I can so I can make some omelets and stuff when I get hungry. Have you got a, an extractor fan? No, but it's right next to the uh, the window, so I just open the window when I cook. Is that, uh, do, do you think of like fry ups or something? I'm not doing fry ups, mate. Literally an omelet if I'm if I'm feeling a bit peckish. You know what I mean, okay. uh, just keeps me going. You know, I'm like my weight and that, so I need to keep eating. Um, other than that, though, I'm just full uh, gaming setup, I guess. Same as always. Come on, I, I mean, everyone that comes on here says their game, but I think it's a sign of the times, if I'm honest. Let's put a little bit of um, context. You say, I do know about your weight. I do. I know that you've got to do everything you can to keep weight on. But I roomed with you um, on a few occasions, and yep. I basically had to go to the team manager and say, I can't room with Courtney anymore. <laughs> uh, why? You know, does he snore? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I said, basically, because Courtney can eat whatever he wants, and Courtney goes down to the local supermarket, and he buys like a week's worth of groceries and he eats those groceries. You know, you, you stay up quite late to midnight. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, crunchy nut. We're talking Horlicks. Um, <laughs> you like a little Chinese takeaway, I'm sure. But yeah, this is me yeah, that yeah. couldn't have anything like yeah. my weight. Ben, I'm coming on to you in a second um, with, with <laughs> weight and uh, skin folds and whatnot. But 
I really struggled. Whereas you, you know, room service, you had a green light next to your name, right? Yeah, I did. How how are you coping with that now? Because obviously no no room service. Yeah. Well, that's why I bought my little hob thing, just so I could get some food, some extra food. Oh, it's the only thing I could do. Otherwise, I'd just be nothing left for me by the end of the tour. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, that'd be it. Um, so, yeah, I just bought, I got a few snacks and that, same old, like, cereal and stuff. And then I've got just a little hob that I can just rustle up a little setting, setting, and uh, good to go. So, can you put any numbers around that? Do, do you know in your head how much you got to eat or... Do you, has, has the nutritionist sat down with you and said, like, Courtney, you need to be banging in 4,000, 5,000 calories a day? Or, you know, what, what is it? No, I don't have any numbers. I mean, I get two shakes a day that have got, I don't know how many calories in, but we've got, got a good few. Um, and then I eat, obviously, whenever with everybody else and probably an extra, I don't know, bowl of cereal and, and an omelette. Um, I've no idea, really. But I, I weigh in every morning, and that's basically what I... Uh, what I, what I base my how how hard I'm going to go today on on uh, on what I'm weighing in at in the morning. Is it is it like a genuine concern for you playing too light or being too light in the week? Do you you know come match day? Do you want to be at a certain weight? Yeah, I mean, uh, especially if you're talking about like Six Nations and stuff, when you're playing against kind of bigger northern Hem- northern hemisphere teams, generally likes to be a little bit heavier. Um, I'm not really worried about my weight playing against New Zealand, Australia. They like to throw the ball around a lot and. They're not not as as big and you don't like it. It's kind of tight up front, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it does kind of differ depending on who you're playing against. But certainly in the Six Nations, I definitely don't want to get too light. Don't feel like you can throw your weight around as, as much. What a lovely problem to have. Uh, in my experience, there's two types of rugby players. One that's struggling to keep, to keep weight on and one that's trying to keep weight off. Uh, Benny Youngs, I'm going to bring you in. Which camp do you sit in? <laughs> I'm smiling. I'm sorry. I was, I was in New Deals, hey. Like, especially the game now is it, the thing is a lot of people is your genetics, your genetics, and your, your weight. You meant to be your weight. Like Courtney's, if he didn't play rugby, he'd be a certain weight, and he'd, he wouldn't fluctuate and he'd be what he'd be. Because he plays rugby, he fluctuates and has to do what he has to do. And like a bit like me, um, where I probably naturally would be around a, like a low ninety kilo play like bloke. Um, but instead I have to be an 88 kilo player. Um, so I have to kind of watch what I eat. Like I say, I had a nice barbecue this afternoon for lunch. Uh, so therefore I won't have, a, not having dinner tonight because I've sort of had my almost cheat meal of for a few days anyway. So it's kind of just watching what you do. And I guess you just, you know, you, no one knows your body better than you. So you kind of know how to work with it as you get more experience. But the game's got quicker. You have to adapt to it. And it's just something I've had to change. It's bloody miserable, isn't it? Like, it's different. And- and like, it's if when you see at- like Courtney eating what he wants and like that, and then like uh, like you mentioned, there's always there's always lads like um, like Johnny May is in incredible shape, but he'd never he could he could probably get away with eating what he wanted, and he'd still be in incredible shape, but he doesn't. He he still absolutely you know caveman diet. Like, yeah, I'm not honest. surprised with Johnny. But if you if you looked at your bloodline, Lenny, you you say you're like big for a scrum half, and you got to play three, four, five kilos down on what you probably want to be. Like, you're the runt in your family if you look at your brother and your dad, right? Yeah, exactly, mate. Like, the, the, I, you know, my dad's a, a, a stocky bloke. My brother's obviously a stocky guy. Um, so I am. I'm the small guy within the family. But even so, I think, um, yeah, you've got to play within a certain weight. I think, like, just the way the game is now, if, if I got too heavy, just, you know, the game's changing all the time. You know, look at like, young Harry Randall coming in and um, how little quick he is and nippy, but he's probably, I don't know what Rance's weight is, but it'd be a good 10 kilos light, I reckon. But he's, um, you know, just such a little live wire and it's great. But that's sort of like, you know, it's going back to that now. And it's, it's just really interesting. It's just oh, the game's you, always changing. You need a little bit of cushion there, mate, to, to protect you, especially when you've got big people like Courtney Laws hunting nines and tens, mate. You've got to ride the hits. If I don't yeah. want to ever give my ribs away to courts. It's, I've, I've been there before on a, on a tap penalty against Northampton once. <laughs> Let's roll it back. Like first, first impressions of each other. Like we, we've known each other. Just probably not going to be a good first impression. But I've, I've got a first impression of Courtney. Um, obviously, being at Northampton, like this big, lanky kid. Like this is before he had to keep the weight on. This is before he found weights. Like you probably thought you were big, didn't you, Courts? No, I don't think I've ever thought I was big. Nah. But <laughs> I remember this kid just like super cool, laid back. Um, and I'm thinking this kid's way too casual to like to to roll like to to play 
big boys rugby, you know what I mean? And um, <laughs> there's two stories here. I remember seeing you uptown one time, Courtney, and like, I don't know what the fashion was back then, but you had jeans on and you had like a skin tight. <laughs> that's all you were wearing? Like you were just- Shut up. <laughs> I swear. And I think yeah, you might've had sense. a chain on. You definitely had a chain on. I can probably. believe it. But my other first impression, like you, you started playing when we were in the championship. Northampton got relegated. We played in the championship. And if I'm right, that is when you kind of broke into the team? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I played my first game against Isha and then uh, I played against Coventry, got my first start and then I broke my jaw that game. So so this, this yeah. is my first impression of playing with you. Um, we're playing Coventry and we're at this line out and I'm like looking at you going, come on, like, come on, Courtney, like just trying to get a reaction out of you. And you kind of just give me this like gormless look, like nothing registered. And I was just like, yeah, it kind of confirmed everything I thought this guy's way too relaxed he's not up for it and then after the game like you you played the full 80 or whatever uh, I found out you broke your jaw and I felt so bad like I, I'd, I'd been judging you going this kid's like not communicating his body language is poor but you basically played a whole game with a broken jaw and then you know basically never looked back since then but Lenny but um first impressions uh, of you uh I can't really remember in an England context because it's been so long but yeah. I, d I just know Leicester Northampton for me, like was good because the Youngs brothers were playing, and Coley was playing, and it, it was it was a horrible fixture, but one it was just so good. I felt like it, it brought out the the best and the worst of me. Um, <laughs> I don't think Northampton Leicester is quite the same since I retired, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. But have you boys got early memories? Of, of meeting each other? Well, I did age groups of courts. So I'd known yeah, courts yeah. like even before the England setup. So and he You're was mad, like just a chilled out bloke, like back of the bus. Oh, you're still exactly the same now, man. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, just fast forward, yeah, nothing's changed. So <laughs> me and courts have gone back like under 20s and 18s yeah. and stuff. So like it's class. Um, and Dill, as I say, like I suppose it's like the Northampton, like it just like you say that that you you represent the community in those games, don't you? Do you know what I mean? It's in like um obviously I grew up supporting Leicester, but I'm not from Leicester. But you just know during that, as you do for Northampton, is um, you represent the whole town, the whole community in that one fiction. It, it kind of it does bring out that um, the best and worst in you. But because you kind of you just know the importance, what it means to community. But no, it's, it's great, mate. Like I think my impressions of you when I when I was coming through is obviously you're a little bit older than me, but you kind of you set the intensity within training, but you also knew how to have a great laugh and off the pitch as well. You knew how to do both, which I think is a great balance. And I think that. That's something I hope me and Courtney uh, are still doing now with this younger group is seeing that you can be intense on the pitch, but then you can have a relax. But I don't know, Courts, Court, you sort of, if you had it, you, you could have, like yesterday, Courts, like, you, you know, you kind of just did it really, mate. But if you, if you had it your way, you could have happily just said your back was a bit tight and, and not done Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> them, yeah. I have to, I haven't played much recently, so... I've got, I've got to get some game time in it where I can, do you know what I mean? So, dude, it was a good hit out yesterday, actually, to be fair. Deals, I remember um, back in the day, I'm sure I've told you this before, when um, this is actually my first impression of you that I can remember, is when you were playing for the Saxons and I was watching on TV, one of the rare games I've ever watched of rugby. And um, you, I think you might have come on or something anyway. You're a bit bigger back then, eh? You're, you're, a, you're a big old like, unit. He was definitely bigger back then. I remember when he Bill. first started playing, he was a early right Early Bills, early Bills well, well, had a well. proper rubber ring around him. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a big old unit. And um, oh, God. You, you stepped, sat somebody down, <laughs> and then carried on running, and then just pinged a little uh, giddy out the back for someone to go for a try. And I was like, this guy is sick. <laughs> and I, you know what I mean? I was like, this is the man. That was my first impression of you. Do you remember Maybe it wasn't that? me. Maybe it wasn't me. It was me. definitely you, mate. It yeah, was it was. Definitely it was at Welford was Road you. and the um the offload was to Tom Van Dell to score in the corner. <laughs> he remembers it. I used to be a lucid prop, remember? So like... Oh, were you lucid and, then? And I'm going to challenge you on this, Courtney. Um, I think Benny, Benny like a fine wine. Um, I mean, both of you have been around a long time. That's testament to your character... Uh, your attributes, obviously, and your, and your will to improve. But Courtney, I can't see you changing from like day one. Whereas Benny, I can see you changing and I had to change to keep up. Yeah. Whereas Courtney, you've got this weird ability. I don't know how you've done it to just be you, you know, laid back, 
um, you know, always on the cusp of, of a meeting. You're always like five seconds before it starts, whereas I'll be there 20 minutes before, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> he loves bowling in with literally a five seconds to spare. And he just bowls in. He's still doing it now. <laughs> well, you're on time, lads. Who cares? You know I mean? no, no, no. But like, you've had this ability to, to be you, and I haven't really seen you change as a person, which is a good thing, whereas I had to change as a person. I had to develop. Um, but the, the one thing that I'd always give you, Courts, is when you train, like you train like you play. And uh, I was watching a, a live, the live session at Twickenham that you guys did the other day. And me and Ugo were there commentating on it. And we were like, what, what's the level of training today? Is it, is it contact? Is it 50%? And then we looked over and Courtney just ended someone. And then we went, oh, yeah, I think it's full on. But... Benny, like, how have you had to change from day one? That you think, like, Martin Johnson's England to Stuart Lancaster's to Eddie Jones now. How have you had to kind of develop as a, as a person and as, as a player? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, when I first started out, it was very much, you know, I was very young halfback. I had some experienced guys in around uh, 10. DC was obviously there. Wiggy was there. You had uh, Nick Easter at eight. So I'm kind of my role was just like, those guys put point, point me in the right direction. I just had to focus on getting the ball in and out, you know, do, do what I needed to do. Um, and then I think under Lanny, um, again, like I probably evolved a bit more into a bit more um, demanding, a bit more like leadership role. And I guess when Eddie came in, it really like he allowed us to kind of take control of things. He allowed us to, um, to grow and, and be yourselves in the environment and like, get the best out of you. And I think under Eddie, I probably had my biggest development in terms of just maturing as a player, in terms of that, uh, knowing what I want, knowing the, what I need from others and the demand and what's expected and all those bits. And I feel like under Eddie, it's just been, it's been the most enjoyable rugby period ever. You know what I mean? And I think um, it's testament to him and the environment that he creates and yourself deals. Cause obviously you were captain to start with coming in and like the, the you know, the environment. So it's Courtney, like it did, it was a, wonderful environment you know very different to what we had previously but it's the team's flourished on the back of it do you do you think Courtney um because we've all experienced the same environments do you think going through the previous um six or seven years with Jono and with Lenny uh has made you appreciate where you're at now in terms of you know my experience is like I enjoyed those early years we had lots of fun but did we actually achieve anything as a as an English team Whereas now I look at you guys and I was lucky enough to be a part of Eddie's team that, you know, we won some things. Like, do you look back on those early years with fond memories? Yeah, I mean, it, it was almost a different game back then, wasn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it seems uh, like so unprofessional. Or yeah, almost yeah like, very much. And it was a lot about... A week in Oxford. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was as much about off the pitch as it was on it. And like you said, we probably didn't fulfil, you know, our potential anywhere we didn't get close do you know what I mean uh until until probably Eddie got here and you know uh put his foot down gave us a kick at the ass and got us on our way kind of thing but he certainly in terms of uh my career I was just um cruising through until um to Eddie turned up and made me you know have to find my potential and I'm very very thankful for that, definitely. I think with Eddie, like one of the biggest things that he, he that he did, he gave us like clarity straight away about what we want to be in our identity and where we're heading. Like everyone brought into that straight away. He empowered the players to get a hold of it and make choices. And and um, whatever you do is it's you know it's your choice about being a better player and how you go about it. I think also he gave us this belief and this 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 sort of vision of where we're going and how we do it. And then players just got a hold of it and and kind of we just all went with it and. Um, and it just sort of built momentum from there. And I think, um, yeah, like I say, he did a great job in terms of creating that sort of vibe and environment. And then you look fast forward to where we are now and it's even bigger and it's even more player led, yet he's still giving that vision to us. So it's, it's awesome. But are you happy that you got to um, experience those previous regimes? Because I, I'm a big believer in experience as a good teacher. So you've had those experiences under different regimes. And it's not to say we didn't try hard, Maybe we just didn't focus in the right areas. But like, here's an example. You, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Oxford, Lenny. Yeah. So uh, I don't know which coach it was under, but like a fellow week or a rest week in the Six Nations for us back then would be train light Monday to get over the previous game, Tuesday, potentially Wednesday, but then go home 
and would have like four or five days at home. Whereas like I've seen what you guys do in a fellow week now, like you're, you're, you're training above test match intensity on a Saturday, you know, you're, you're, you're getting every little bit of um, time that you can to improve as a team. I mean, you, you do have your downtime and you go home to your family bubble at the right time. But we were um, in that fellow week in Oxford, like the, the boozing. It was just like, uh, um, it was like a party week effectively. Have you got any um, early sort of touring memories or, or favorite sort of things that you got to experience and you're happy you did um, from those regimes? Like you say, Dills, like the, the early years were great because like I was young, enjoyed it. It was class, you had some great people. Single. Um, it was just very different, mate. <laughs> it was very different. Yeah, it was very different. And then you go, um, you know, the game's changed. It, it has got more professional. It was it, not to say it wasn't professional then, it's just more understanding. It's just got this, just it's evolved like all things. So if you go forward another 10 years from now, it's going to be more professional, it's going to be different. So that, and, but one of the tours was uh, 2010, we went to Australia. And I remember like we beat Australia in the second test, didn't we? And then half of us had to go to Napier and play the Maris on like a Tuesday yeah. night. Can you remember that? And I yeah, remember I, I was, I don't know, did any of you boys come to Napier or not? I did, no, yeah. Dills, you did, of course, and Dills, you were on the other one. And there was like, the bus was leaving. You had like six lads with their bags outside. They were off to a flight to Vegas. Like they weren't even coming to Napier. They were going direct from Sydney to Vegas whilst we were leaving to go to an airport to go to Napier to play against tomorrow. Like that was how different it was, you know? Like the bomb squad. Do you remember, that was uh, ridiculous. Hughes um, did his hammy, didn't he? He didn't play a minute on tour. <laughs> they went straight that. to Vegas. <laughs> we, we were joking. We were joking. I do, yeah. I think he even trained a minute, went straight to Vegas. Um, we, we saw, um, obviously, watch you boys train live at Twickenham the other day, and uh, me, myself and Ugo were watching, and we saw Anthony Watson, and he obviously scored uh, he scored a brace. He got two tries last week. Yeah. And um, I leant over to Ugs and I went, Ugs, if that was you and you'd scored two, you wouldn't be training today, would you? And he goes, nah, I'd be a bit neural. Hamstring would probably be a bit tight. <laughs> <laughs> but that that there is is a clear indicator of how the times have changed and how the environments changed. Like you could get away with doing those things, but like Ant Watson's out there training and he was a live wire. Like he was everywhere during that session. Courts, how many caps you on? Nearing ninety. Yeah, eighty-eight, I think. That coming up, eighty-eight coming up, I think. Yeah, so so Courts, you're approaching ninety. Lenny, you're approaching one hundred and ten, which is huge. Like. What's keeping you boys going? Like, like, what's the motivation? Because when I look at you on paper, you've both played in three major global tournaments. Um, you're both toured with the British and Irish Lions. You're both, you know, a century of tests. Like Courtney, you know, touch wood, everything goes well for you. Like, what's what's keeping you going? Like, no, I got I got three short of a hundred, and I was done. I was spent. I was physically done, like mentally I was done. But like you boys have achieved more than me. Um, not That's not me saying I achieved a lot, but you've done everything there is to do in, a, in an England shirt, you know, like. For me, mate, I guess like, I still feel like I've got more in me. I still feel like I haven't done everything I want to do or, or had that um, almost peak yet. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to phrase it, but I still got that burning desire to improve, which I think goes a long way. I still feel like there's things that I can do and achieve in this. And I st ultimately, I feel like I can help the team. Um, so that's a huge motivation. Uh, you know, no one knows your better body better than yourself. Like I'm 31 um, and I feel good. I feel good. And, um, you know, I want to be a part of it. And I've still got things that I want to achieve. So I guess once the, um, I, I think once you know that you, you, you've done all you spent, I guess it's clear as day. But right now, no, I, I feel far from that point. Um, and, you know, like, you mentioned about courts, like I said, a courts the other day, like obviously shows the difference between how we play the game. You know, courts actually got capped three or four games just before I did. Um, but he's had such a tired old injuries. Um, you know, he'd, he'd probably be, a, be ahead of me to be honest on cap wise. So, uh, but we just, um, just enjoy it, mate. I still love it. And I still feel like I've got some more to give, you know? Nice. And it's, it, I think you can clearly say like Jason Leonard, uh, men's most cap player at 114s, within grasping reach mate and it'd be great for you to um you know i love jace but it'd, it'd be great to see you surpass that thank uh, you mate um 
<laughs> I was saying Courtney's got a hell of a knack of um, getting injured before major tournaments. And I was thinking if, if I never got suspended, I'd probably play about 200 games for England by now. <laughs> hey, you, yeah. you, would have, you would have the record, mate. Honestly, you'd be a lion. Be yeah, cool. Joker. Um, I would have been a, yeah, a, a British and Irish Lion winning tourist in Australia. Yeah. Nah. But Courts, what about you? Like, um, what's what's the drive there? What's what is it for you? Got kids to feed, didn't I, mate? Four of them. Jeez. <laughs> no, to be fair, to be fair, I still feel like I haven't quite reached my potential yet, and I still feel like I can get there. Um, if I can just stay fit for long enough, I'll get there. Um, and I'm competitive, mate. I'm, I just I just like being competitive and I want to be the best. I want to be the best and I want to, um, yeah, I just want to compete as long as I can. And as long as I can, and as long as I can compete and I feel like I can be the best player and, and justify my spot in the team, I'm going to do that. I think this is a good a kind of a good message right now. Like, do you guys feel like you've only just unlocked or had your eyes open to what you can be after working with Eddie? So for, from my experience, I worked with plenty of coaches, but as soon as I became like an England international at 21 years old, it was either really me that wasn't coachable or I didn't really receive much coaching after that. It was all just preparing for the weekend. Whereas Eddie got me at 29, 30 years old and just went like, this is what you can do. This is what you can do with the last years of your career. Has that? Have your eyes been opened up? Have you had that sort of uh, epiphany that you can really do something special? With, with your career, Lenny? Definitely, mate. I think like this environment allows you to be as good as you want to be. As long as you still have to do it, you still work out the work. But under Eddie, I think that's the thing, like like you just mentioned there, really, Dills. Like he coaches you, he challenges you, he 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 gives you um goals, he he um gives you things to get after. He he, he pumps your tires up when he needs to. Like I just feel like he's he's the, the guy. Uh, and luckily I'm very blessed to got Steve now at the club as well. I've got two guys that just know how to tap in and, and their, their desire to always improve themselves sets the, almost the, the desire for the players to follow suit. And if anyone's going to do it, it'll be uh, to, to unlock the best out of me. It's, it's definitely Eddie and Steve. And I feel very lucky that I've got, you know, obviously Eddie International and then and Steve a club. And it's great, mate. Like, it, like I say, this environment allows you to be as good as you want to be. So Eddie comes in at 2016. Uh, I remember my meeting with him, that sort of ultimatum, like you can be involved with this, but this is what it's going to take. Or you can just go back to being a club player. And I chose the blue pill. Um, Lenny, yours was no doubt um, need to be sharper, need to lose a bit of weight. Um, did he throw a tub of sweets at you? Am I right in saying that? Yeah, he. so uh, Charlotte, our team manager, messaged us when we arrived at uh, the, the hotel in uh, Penny Hill and said... Um, Pop and see Eddie for one on one. So I knocked on the door, come in. Benny, how are you? I never met Eddie. Benny, how are you? So I'm good, thank you. Uh, he's like, take a seat. So I've chat away. You know, what do you think of the game? You know, what do you think of um, how to attack this way? And you know, general just rugby sort of chat and how he, how he, how I saw the game, how he saw the game, whatever. This went off a couple of minutes, and they said, um, right, mate. He said you could, uh, you can be the best halfback in the world, but why aren't you? And I was like, uh, oh. Um, us and he's like nap. I was like kicking nap, running nap. <laughs> I was like okay. And he said uh, he goes you need to lose some weight, mate. He goes you're carrying too much. I need you fitter so you can be sharper. And then uh, he chucked me a bag of sweets. Said do you want them? I said no. Nah. He went mate, that's a great start. He goes get to eight <laughs> kilos. So, but that's the thing with Eddie. Like you never leave the room unsure of what you need to do. Do you know what I mean? I like he has a like funny way of doing with it. It was very different. But like I loved it. I thought right, that's brilliant. One he, he's giving me compliments, but two he said but you need to do this in order to get to where I think you can get. You need to do X, Y, Z. And, and then, like I say, then it's up to you then. And uh, off I went and got a hold of my program, spoke to head conditioner, and we got hold of it quickly and sorted it out. But um, you never leave unclear, mate. He gave you the choice and uh, you, you made it happen. Um, yeah. big, big courts, like, I think I've got an idea of what your chat was like. I mean, I don't know how the chat went, but am I right in thinking you came out of that you're almost like a mummy, you know, you're held together by tape, you're kind of plagued by injuries. Hmm. Um, and he wanted you to carry the ball more. Yeah. You know, you had a massive impact in the game defensively. But if I look at you now, you're one of the key kind of ball carriers in that England pack. Like how did you, what, what was the kind of key things from your first meet with Eddie? What did he want from you? Yeah, pretty much. Um, he wanted me to keep up my defense, my defense, 
Uh, he wanted me hit and carry, basically. And obviously, the basics to go with being a line-out forward as well. Yeah, but hit and carry, my points of difference. And at the time, I was I was great in defence, uh, but I wasn't carrying. Uh, I just, for whatever, whatever reason... I suppose we went through that phase at the club where I just didn't need to carry. Do you know what I mean? We had Samu, um, saw like everybody. Do you know what I mean? So, deals. Um, just big deals. Yeah. yeah. But no, I just, I just, for whatever reason, just lost confidence in it, went away from it and just relied on my defence and my kind of line out work um, as a player. But he wanted more from me. And and at the start of my career, I was, I was always carrying. Do you know what I mean? That was like one of my points of difference. So, Mate, I, I saw you go away from that sort of uh, first campaign with Eddie and, you know, courts, uh, again, I love you for it, but like the most laid back man in the world, last on the field, last to do his boots up, line out strapping, not on, and we've got line out session. You know, one of, one of my best mates in the team and he's, he's late for team run and I'm like, I've got to call him out in front of the boys here. Like, <laughs> after the training, I'm like, courts, come on, bro. Like, I need you. Oh, yeah. But then I saw you go from like, being that and then all of a sudden you were the last guy on the training field after training doing extras yeah, doing yeah. ball carrying work and then all of a sudden you become this reinvent yourself you know not just this defensive player but this ball ball carrier as well so i think that's just testament to to well eddie tapping into you and, and challenging you i think um, yeah and, and your your work rate mate you you took the you took the bait which is good to see did indeed yeah yeah no i'm glad i did mate i'll, I'll certainly I don't think I'd have gone on a Lions tour if I'd have continued where I was. And uh, I certainly don't think I'd have had this many, gotten this far and, and, and uh, still be still be in the team now if I didn't, uh, if I didn't get, get a bit of a kick, kick at the ass. You obviously come through and you, you're young players and you haven't really got a care in the world like you, you alluded to earlier. But now you are role models. You're, you're kind of, you know, the, the amount of experience and tests that you've got, do you feel a responsibility to the Harry Randalls coming in, um, George Martin courts. Do, do you feel a responsibility to help those guys? H how do you find that role as, uh, you know, a senior player or a leader? You know, how, how do you find that? I know, I know what Eddie wants from me in camp as a leader. He just wants me to be myself. And I think one thing I do bring to the team is just probably a bit of relaxed energy. Do you know what I mean? So if I can help people to be relaxed, just by being me, then then I'm quite happy with that. But in terms of, uh, especially at the club, I suppose I do more uh, at the Saints. Um, you know, just getting people, the young young lads, whatever, d just coming and doing my extras with me and things like that, and um, helping them kind of know what to do in certain situations or, or think about what they can do in certain situations and 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 what might help them in their game. Yeah. What about you, Len? I mean. You do you know what? You're, you're also in a role, Lenny, at nine and 10. You know, you guys basically control how the team plays. So naturally, you fit that role. Like from a young age, you've got to step into that, don't you? But how, how you find it now that you've got, you know, 100 odd caps under your belt? I, uh, I really enjoy it. I, th I think the first thing I always think, like the, the best thing I can do for any youngster is actually train well myself. Like that's first and foremost, I've got to train well. I've got to um, go about my work as well as I can do to set the example of that. And secondly, mate, I, I love helping out the boys. Like, I love it. I genuinely love it. Like um, I want those guys to thrive in this environment. And if there's anything that I can give to help them, if there's anything I can show them to help them, if there's anything I can do post-training to help them, I will always do that. I, I, I get a lot of pleasure out of that. And I also feel like the more that you give to others, like, often it's, it's a weird thing where like a youngster can come in, you can, give as much as you can like you will pick something up or there'll be something that you um pick up or, or, or do so i really enjoy it and luckily the guys that do come in here have such an appetite to get better that actually it kind of it works brilliantly so what's happening like with you guys as athletes you know i got better as i got older because i understood it and i was actually challenged by ultimately by eddie in the environment but what are you going like doing to make yourselves better have you have you learned how to train better have you learned how to recover better prepare better like how's that because this is a new this is a new thing like back in the day like recovery for me was like just hang out in the hot tub for a bit um <laughs> what are you guys doing to to kind of make sure you're staying where you are um i think certainly as you get older you you know you start to understand what works for you 
Um, so for me, I know that I need to feel fresh going into games to to play at my best. And that doesn't mean that I don't train, but it means that I don't overtrain. Do you know what I mean? So I, I know that I don't, I can't run too much in a week because it will just kill my joints. But I have to get enough work in the gym. Um, so I'm strong enough and I've got enough size to go out there and perform. And then you just have to try and work with, and it's easy when you're older, isn't it? Because people obviously, for one, they, they've been working with you hopefully for a while and they can respect what you're about um, and they can accom- accommodate you a bit more, um, which so it's easier. But And then it's just about creating a program which suits me um, and, and doesn't obviously harm or detriment the team at all. Um, and it's just trying to find that balance. Lenny, what, uh, how are you staying ahead of the game? Like, what, what's uh, changed for you o- o- over time? I guess, like, course, you kind of figure out what works for you. But I think the biggest thing for me is like the recovery part of it, like getting my prep done early. But it's just the mental side of it. Like, it's just making sure that you go into the games clear, you're relaxed. Um, you know, there's like hot pot yoga stuff, meditation stuff. But you just need that time just to like <laughs> twitch it off, like. <laughs> You know, it's an intense environment, like elite sport, you're intense, you're under the microscope, you know, you play at the weekend, everyone wants to to, to uh, pull it apart and let you know how they do. You know, you need that time to yourself just to like sh- shut the noise out and just like bring itself back to yourself and, and what you want to do and, and how you want to perform and where you want to be. And I just think like, I was just find time for that during the week, puts me in a good stead for the, for the weekend. You're saying like um, the, the noise on the outside, like, let's talk about social media. Um, Courts, I love your social media. You know, I, I basically learn all about politics via you. Uh, Lenny, what, what about you dealing with criticism and stuff like that? Do, do you come into much on there? Do you, do you filter it? Do you switch it off? Do you delete it off your phone? Or do you just take it head on? No, mine's all filtered. So luckily I don't see anything uh, other than the people that I follow. So <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. Um, but it's the way the world is now, isn't it? Like everyone just wants to jump on. So I don't need to, to check to know what people would be saying, but um like i say for me i think the important thing is like you get the you do the prep and the training you do all that stuff you do physical stuff actually get the mental bit right so that you know like that's in the bank but actually mentally i'm going in clear thinking like ready to go um and all that stuff like just yeah just no need that will help you one bit cool so you you you're fairly relaxed around it i mean i I think you're quite um combative you know you you take it on yeah yeah i mean Sometimes, like, I just do what I fancy. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not really that bothered. I'm quite. Um, I know. I know why I think how I think about certain things, and I know my the people who love and support me know why and how I think about things. So, as long as that's the case, who cares what anybody else says? Do you know what I mean? Like, it just is what it is, isn't it? Um, and I'm too like. I don't know. Like, I don't know why I'd be bothered about who, what people are saying who I don't even know, like, why would, why would that bother me at all? Because it, may, it, it just makes no difference. Like, life's too short, do you know what I mean? Just just enjoy yourself. I'm, I'm here to play rugby. I like playing rugby. That's why I'm still playing, and, and I want to just enjoy it. 2023, you're always going to be there? Hopefully. Yeah. Barring injury, I'll be there, bro. Barring injury. Lenny, <laughs> how many, you have, like, 150 yeah. caps, you'll be like... Come on, come on, mate. We've got wings, mate. Big. We'll we'll course, get come on, more. we can get there, mate. Come on. We'll get there together. We'll together. Get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Wait, you do you know what you're gonna look like in 2023, Lenny? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like like rugby rugby, the aging process, it just accelerates. It's like Benjamin yeah. Button, but reverse. It's like <laughs> you, I mean, look at Alan Jones, mate. He's what is he? He looks like a 65-year-old man. Like Lenny, if you keep going. <laughs> If you keep going to your 34, 35, mate, the lid's going to fall off. Like, no, 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 I'm not thinking that. I'll be right. I'll be right. I'll look young. Yeah, um, no, mate, 2020, like, I'll be 33. So, yeah, without doubt, I, I can, yeah, I feel like, like we touched on earlier, mate, I still, and Courtney said it brilliantly, like, if you feel like you've still got more to give and you feel like there's still, you haven't reached your best, absolutely, mate, go for it. Um, I've had a couple of lads on the, and a couple of guys and girls on the pod that have got young families, like newborns, um, their first kids. Like you guys are established family men. You know, you've been around that long. You've got, Lenny, you've got two kids. Courtney, you've got four. Yep. Mm. But are your families, is, is England rugby and, and dad going away for rugby work and putting on the, 
is that like ingrained now? Is it easier to do because it's been happening for so long? I think so. I think we talk, spoke spoke about this the other day, Lenny, didn't, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Just talking about how they're just used to it. Uh, um, my missus did tell me that my little girl, who's seven now, she's getting a bit older, so she's mm, that her emotions are probably changing a bit. She was a bit upset that I was going to be away for my birthday, um, so that's the first time that's ever happened. But they're just used to it, just used to it. And I suppose, um, what about you, Len? Is it is it just crack on as normal? Dad's off. Yeah, it's sort of, it's, it's it's hard. You know, you do miss out on a lot of family time, like you do. And luckily, me and Court's got. Uh, very good wives that very good support. wives yeah very good wives to support us and that was to do what we do but it is you do miss out on things and you do miss them without doubt but they as they get older they kind of understand what you're doing where you're going and um you know now like you know they have an interest and they want to know and yeah, it's, yeah. it's lovely it's lovely you know what i mean they know what you're doing and they're like oh you're playing for me you're playing rugby and you know my daughter is keep your eye on the ball daddy i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? but, like she's fine now i'm as far as six and um like it's um it's great, man. Like as the older they get, the more they understand, the more actually, um, I think they actually enjoy it. I think more. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I suppose this is a sort of thing when you get to your age brackets uh, is is like the legacy piece as well. Like you know, you, your kids can physically understand; they can understand and see what you're doing, and it must make you and them very proud. You know. Um, but if anyone is a hero, it's your it's your wives. I mean, geez, yeah. especially yours, Courtney. Four kids. I mean, right. I've been trying to homeschool one, mate, and oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, I don't know how she does it, honestly, uh, but plenty of presents helps. On on presents, um, this is where Eddie captures hearts and minds behind closed doors, um, and this is why the boys love them. I remember, like, little things like, I don't know, if, did your wives get flowers and, and yeah, leather yeah. goods and yeah. stuff like this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it just wasn't mine. It just, that's good to know. <laughs> um, but, you know, just the little touches, you know, like sending a note with a, a bouquet of flowers saying, thank you for letting us have your partner. You'll be home soon type thing. Or coming back from, you know, an away game, you go to your hotel room and on everyone's mantelpiece in their, their bedroom, there's a photo of your family. It's yeah. just like those little touches go a long way. And again, yeah. Lenny, it's a bit like the tomato sauce or the birthday cake. It's the small wins in those in those moments um, can buy you a lot of credit, I think. Um, yeah. So my question was, has he been gifting anything recently? I think the last one for us would have been Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, last yeah, one Christmas, was Christmas. cards. Oh, you said it was like, he's so aware of like, of what we obviously do, but he understands that there's, you know, that we do have <laughs> families and that, that they're on yes. their own. And, you know, cause you, you, you go, you know, we work out lads. I think normally it's about five months a year, potentially we're away, aren't we? You know, with, 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 with tournaments and stuff like that's a long time. And he, he understands that that takes a, a choice and a sacrifice by them. You know what I mean? Um, and it's his way of, of just saying thanks. And, you know, um, thanks for, allowing us to do what we do. So, yeah, it's, a, it's always a very good touch. Between us, probably about 300 games, nearly. Um, favourite memory in that time, Lenny? One favourite memory, blimey. Um, there's been a lot, mate, to, to nail down. I think 2016, winning the Grand Slam was was huge because of, of the back of what happened previously and, and where we were as a team and where we we're going. Uh, that's, a, that's an awesome memory for me. Japan, the whole experience of that. Um, I've been very fortunate. I think my, my best memories have all pretty much been under ready, to be honest with you. Do, is Japan like, um, you know, so close? Is that kind of giving you an extra kick to, to push on to 2023? Yeah, I think you certainly look at it and, you, and you, you'd love to have another shot at it. Courts, what about you? Favourite favorite memory? The Australia tour was good. Uh, I remember that first Australia tour was when me and you Len got our first starts, was it? Yeah, that was a great tour, mate. Like, that that was game, great. yeah. And we won the last game. We, we can't both talk started. about that one because I didn't come on that one, all right? So you know, we're talking about the three of us. <laughs> and we, we both we both went quite well, Len. I remember that. That was quite good. Yeah. And I went to the team and, then, and then and then and then we uh, we won the last game. Uh, my favourite moment, probably again, Dills, I don't actually know if you were there. Um we played in Twickenham against Australia in that purple kit. 
Yeah, mate, I was good. You you did that little offload to Chris Ash and he scored the best yeah, yeah, try. Yeah, to that, was, that was 20, Len, 2010, me and, Len, me and Len, you know, working our magic again. That was a good <laughs> moment. <laughs> Honestly, to look. be fair, when we were, do you remember, Len, um, when Ash is running it in and like yeah. we were obviously trying to catch up with him? Do you remember how loud it was? Like, I don't think I'll ever forget that in my entire life. I could not hear a thing. Like, my ears were ringing because uh, it the the noise that was mate, coming from the stadium. Mate, like, it generally, like, it sounds, it generally, like, gives me almost goosebumps now because I remember standing almost, we ran, like, trying to chase him, so we almost stopped. And, yeah. like, it feels like, if Luke, you know, mate, like, it felt like the stadium was, like, shaking, like, the place. Can was, I just interject for a second? Leave. I was playing in that game. I started. <laughs> and I was the first forward to be there to celebrate. I think Mark Cueto gets there, someone else gets there, Ben Foden, then I'm in there. Like, Courts, you think you're in support. I was running so fast, I didn't have time to listen to the crowd. That was insane. Sorry, you know, Bill, that sorry. was a great game, wasn't it? it so was you really remember, Dil, you must remember how flipping loud it was. I just can't, I would never forget how loud it was when he was running that in. It was insane. Um, Rid- ridiculous. Um, I, I guess I'd better add mine to it. For, yeah, what's for yours, me, mate? just like we, we kind of covered it before, like I played 70 games for England before Eddie come in, you know, like a real stop-start career. A lot of games, it was, you know, it was good. We had fun, but like, did we actually win anything? Like, did we go on a run of games? Were we dominant? No, I don't think we were. We came in 2016 and I wasn't in that 2015 uh, tournament here in England. So I didn't have the hurt from that, but I was basically given, thrown a bone by Eddie. And to come in, and you know to grand slam after 13 years i think it was off the back of a horrible tournament the previous year like i think for all the boys it was a massive sort of relief you know i'm I'm looking at robbo both you boys you know like it was just a big moment for everyone just to get that kind of monkey off our back and then we went to australia and then we went 18 games unbeaten and it basically showed me like for 70 odd games i've just been dossing and then within 18 games we'd had the most successful period that we'd had in forever and it all came down to why and it was it was hard work it was relentless hard work and a change of environment a change of stimulus a change of how we're doing things and it just showed me like previously you know the, the other 70 games we were just cruising but yeah 20, 2016 for me just the whole year was really enjoyable but I mean look at me I lost a lot of hair I gained a few wrinkles and um, <laughs> put some miles on the clock, but it was all worth it. It was all worth it, 100%. Right, boys, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I hope to see you here in 10 years' time, still playing 200 games <laughs> to, your, to your names. Um, but good luck for the rest of the tournament, boys. Uh, pleasure to catch up with you, bro. Cheers, Dills. Thanks, mate. Take care. See you, my boy. Boys.